Have you ever found retirement saving complex and convoluted? Well, in this video, I break down the three things you absolutely need to have for your retirement. And if you have these three basic things, the probability of success in retirement goes up significantly. Now, the first one I want to break down is the need for lifetime income. The reason why this is first is because if you don't have income, you don't have retirement. You need to have cash flow on a monthly basis that'll support your lifestyle when you're no longer working and earning it. In fact, people used to get pensions in the United States. Almost every worker would work for a company for 30, 40 years. They'd retire and get a pension. That pension would be enough to cover the income for them and their spouse for the rest of their life. They had guaranteed lifetime income. People weren't running out of money in retirement and people weren't worried about running out of money at all. They were actually living longer and having great quality of life in retirement because they weren't worried about running out of money. Running out of money is the number one fear amongst retirees consistently year after year after year. And AARP does a good job of sharing what surveys are coming out, asking seniors, what are they concerned about? And that's at the top of the list. So lifetime income is the number one thing you must have. And just think about it. Do you really want to be in your 80s, sitting around watching Bloomberg every day, trying to get an idea of if you should be spending money or not? It's, it's stressful. You don't want to have to live a life where you're always de deferring gratification because you're worried you could run out of money. It'd be better to just have a consistent, regular, safe, monthly flow of income that you knew you could spend confidently so that way you didn't have to worry about what the next month was going to look like and the month after that. You could just have quality of life and know you're not going to run out of money. If you can neutralize the risk of running out of money first, then you can make every other risk more manageable. If you don't take that risk off the table and you live with the risk that you could run out of money, every other risk gets more serious. And so we're going to break down two other things you must have in your retirement that you need that are absolutely crucial. But before I do, if I can just ask, please, for you to take a minute, hit the like button. It helps me out tremendously. It allows me to reach more people and be able to share this message so I can help more people get prepared for what they're going to need for retirement. Now, the second thing you need is you need a plan for in case your spouse dies or when your spouse dies, because a lot of people end up getting devastated in their retirement because they're going along just fine. They have both social securities. They maybe have a pension or annuities that are providing income. They have the married filing jointly tax bracket, which is arguably more advantageous than the single filing tax bracket. And so everything's fine for a while and they don't do a good enough job planning and looking at what happens when the first spouse passes away. This is one of the first things I evaluate when I sit down with a new client. And if the ratio is that they're going to lose more income than they can handle, for example, if they're going to lose 60% of their income and their expenses aren't going to be met by the remaining income, that's a problem. You have to neutralize that. So what do you need? You need life insurance or you need some type of joint lifetime income payouts on your either annuities or the assets you could convert to annuities to be able to cover that surviving spouse. So again, if you have a spouse that passed away, there's two ways you can neutralize that risk. You could buy life insurance on the spouse that has the income that if they passed away and it went away, it would be devastating. Or you could elect to have joint lifetime income payouts on your annuity income. And again, that would solve the first risk, which would be running out of money. But now in this context where that risk is triggered by the first spouse passing away, you could have joint lifetime incomes that would kick in to protect that surviving spouse. Tom Hagen is a phenomenal economist. And he often talks about how retirement is really a women's issue. Women will outlive their husband nine times out of 10. For every one 90 year old man I have as a client, I have like nine 90 year old women. And that's just because women typically live longer. Women generally take better care of themselves a lot of times. You know, I always tell my clients, walk through a restaurant on any given night and just look what, if there's a man and a woman out to eat, look what the woman's eating and look what the man's eating. And this isn't always, okay? I don't want this to be like gender stereotyping, but a lot of times women are gonna be choosing the salads, fish, lighter dishes, what are gonna be on the man's plate? Steaks, burgers, fried chicken, right? These are gonna be a lot of the problem. You can just see it at the dinner table a lot of times. Now that's not to meant to be a stereotype. It's just sometimes I've noticed that when you go out to eat, men are ordering the heavier dishes that typically are going to kill you sooner. I mean, it's just the reality of life. And so you really want to be prepared for this. I've seen so many widows that are just one stunned when their husband passed away or their, or whoever it is, if their spouse passed away. But also I've seen a lot of scenarios where one spouse will pass away and they're absolutely devastated. And now they're in the higher filing tax bracket because they're single instead of married and their income disappears because maybe a pension stopped. They lose the lower of the two social securities, which is what happens when your spouse passed away. You lose the lower of the two social securities or they didn't have the right annuity choices set up. Or maybe they were spending too much money thinking it was going to go on forever. And now the assets aren't there to be able to support the surviving spouse. So don't let that happen to you. Neutralize that risk. It's something that you can avoid if possible. The third thing you absolutely need for retirement is a plan for long-term care. In fact, when I have a client who comes to me as a widow, 
the first two things I always do, I always look to make sure that they're not going to run out of money first and they're going to have a plan for long-term care. If you can do those two things, you basically can, I mean, really, you could pretty much fortify most people's retirement. Now, there's going to be things like inflation, potentially higher taxes. There could be a ton of other risks that could come up. But if you can get those two neutralized, you're going to get rid of a significant portion of the risk for that widow. And so a plan for long-term care doesn't have to wait until you're a widow to be able to start looking at it. Really, you can make sure that both spouses are going to be cared for. Another scenario I see all the time is you'll have two spouses. One will need care first. They will drain the portfolio, drain the future income that portfolio can provide for the surviving spouse. And now the surviving spouse is left high and dry. What if they need care? So this could be a really dangerous situation. You really want to have a great plan where your assets will kick in the right amount of money, the most tax efficient way possible, right when you need it to cover long-term care costs. Long-term care costs can be astronomically expensive and there's one of the fastest growing inflation rates as a retirement risk year after year after year. Long-term care is speculated to be anywhere between seven and some, some research institutions I follow say 13%. That means that every five years, the care costs are doubling. So again, you can neutralize this risk very effectively. I personally use a lot of asset-based long-term care this is where you can roll money into like a hybrid long-term care policy where you're able to keep control of your asset, but it kicks in significant money tax-free for long-term care when you need it. So this is a great way to add in some control, some benefits to be able to make sure you have a plan for long-term care. And again, I rent for it's Tom Hagner, one of my favorite economists. He always says, having a plan, any plan is better than no plan. So there's a lot of different ways you can build in money to help protect you for long-term care. And there's some great tools you can do if you're proactive and really want to make sure that you neutralize this risk. So those are the three things I would argue you absolutely need. If you can get those three, you're going to have a much higher success rate in retirement and a happier, healthier, prosperous retirement so you can live out your purpose. So if you did like this video, please take a minute, subscribe to the channel. Please leave me a comment, ask questions. If there's anything I missed or anything you want to go over, please feel free to leave that down below. I'll make sure to respond to everybody. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.